So you know how there are some Hollywood marriages that everyone's just green with envy over because the couples are like the ultimate power couple? But then on the flip side, you've got those marriages that are just straight up nasty. And even the fallout is even nastier. And it's like things hit rock bottom when the exes start duking it out online for the whole world to see. Well, that seems to be what's going down with Kimora Lee Simmons and Russell Simmons. Once upon a time, they were the talk of the town. But now it seems like they've earned themselves a new title, the banter couple, because they can't seem to stop throwing shade at each other. And this time, it's Kimora who's supposedly stirring the pot. Rumor has it she's not just coming for her ex-husband but also dragging Usher into the mix, and it's for something major. Word on the street is that Kimora's allegedly planning to drop a bombshell by exposing a supposed affair between Russell and Usher. And if you know Kimora, you know she's not one to mince words. So buckle up, folks. Looks like we're in for a bumpy ride. All right, so here's the scoop on the whole Kimora, Usher, and Russell situation. Recently, there's been some serious shade thrown Russell Simmons' way by his ex, Kimora Lee Simmons. Apparently, Russell and Usher were seen buddying up in Bali of all places. Now, Usher's catching flack for hanging out with Russell, especially considering Russell's been laying low in Bali since he faced those SA allegations back in 2017. And you know, Kimora couldn't resist chiming in on the action. She took to her Instagram stories to roast her ex, posting, What is this I'm seeing in the news today? Alol, y'all some wild boys for real. Then, just to add some extra spice, she followed it up with, Not by my bed, lol. Poking fun at Russell's post where he's all about praising his bromance with Usher. When I was at the lowest point in my life, I had an operation when I woke up. This man was sitting by my bed, he wrote. I had known Usher since he was a kid, but we really bonded because of our mutual love for self-discovery and our belief in yogic science as a direct route to realizing God's consciousness in ourselves. People remember to remember this. A friend walks in when others walk out. I will never forget the generosity of spirit I witnessed in this man. God bless you, baby bro, at Usher. Love you. Usher was heavily criticized for going on the yoga retreat with Simmons, who has largely been shunned by the wider entertainment world after facing a number of accusations relating to R and SA. Back in 2017, a model named Carrie Clausen Kaligi accused Russell of SA her in 1991, when she was only 17, in front of director Brett Ratner. She said she met Russell at a casting call and went on a dinner date with him before he invited her back to his apartment to hang out with him and Brett. She claimed he then made aggressive SEX advances and yanked off her clothes. I looked over at Brett and said, help me, and I'll never forget the look on his face, she told the Los Angeles Times. In that moment, the realization fell on me that they were in it together. She said Russell tried to force her to have intercourse, but she fought it wildly. Carrie then claimed that she acquiesced to having oral SEX with him while Brett sat there and watched. She also alleged that Russell briefly penetrated her without her consent while she was taking a shower afterwards, which hurt so much. Soon after, many other women spoke out and accused Russell of mistreatment, and over the course of the last six years, more than a dozen women have alleged that he either R-worded, A-ed, or harassed them. Russell has continuously denied all wrongdoing. He first stated of Carrie's claims, everything that occurred between Carrie and me occurred with her full consent and participation. During an appearance on In Depth with Graham Benzinger, Russell claimed that he's never been violent with anyone and that he has taken nine lie detector tests since allegations against him surfaced seven years ago. He later added of the others, I vehemently deny all these allegations. These horrific accusations have shocked me to my core and all of my relations have been consensual. I have enormous respect for the women's movement worldwide and their struggle for respect, dignity, equality, and and power. In the wake of the growing controversy surrounding him, however, Russell announced that he was stepping down from his business empire in November 2017. While I have never been violent, I have been thoughtless and insensitive in some of my relationships over many decades, and I sincerely and humbly apologize, he said at the time. This is a time of great transition. The voices of the voiceless, those who have been hurt or shamed, deserve and need to be heard. As the corridors of power inevitably make way for a new generation, I don't want to be a distraction so I am removing myself from the businesses that I founded. I will step aside and commit myself to continuing my personal growth, spiritual learning, and above all, to listening. Russell, who is spending most of his time living in Bali now, reflected on his downfall in an explosive new interview, and he admitted that while he behaved in a crude manner in the past, he did not do anything illegal, and that he took a series of polygraph tests to back up these claims. Of course I've been insensitive, he said, but certainly never been forceful in any of my relationships all of which I've had have been consensual. I took nine lie detector tests, 
People don't know that. Nine separate, seven from the chairman of the Polygraph Association, one for each and serious accusation. Because they had an experience and they can reimagine it just a little bit different. And could you be vulnerable enough to accept it? I took nine lie detector tests. People don't know that. Nine separate, seven from the chairman of the Polygraph Association. One for each of the serious accusations. He added that there were very gray areas in which he might have processed a memory different than another person involved might have. He added of his past conduct, I think that the culture and the climate was different, and the way people interacted was different. I think to judge 40 years ago as if it was today, we get in trouble. We have to accept where we were and move on and be somewhere else in the future if we don't like where we were. And I think we're doing that now. And I think that's the good that comes with me too. Russell added that he had the lie detector tests recorded but no one in the mainstream media would cover it because of the narrative that we don't want to go backwards, we want to believe women. We have to give them the benefit of the doubt, but we can't demonize people without proof either, he continued. No one in the mainstream would cover that. Why do you think that is? There's a narrative. Which is what? That um, we, we don't want to go backwards, we want to believe women. In the interview, he also complained about how the allegations have impacted his life negatively, stating, It's ruined my life. It's ruined my relationships with everything. All my five charities have gone down. Now, let's take a trip down memory lane and dive into the whole drama between Kimura and Russell. So, Russell Simmons has helped launch the careers of some of the biggest musicians on the planet through Def Jam recordings. But behind all the glitz and glam, there's been a whole lot of drama, including the messy divorce from Kimura Lee Simmons. And just when you thought the dust had settled, Bam! Russell's past romantic escapades are back in the spotlight. He's out there vehemently denying any wrongdoing in those essay allegations from 2017. But in the process, he's dropping bombshells about his love life, claiming he's been with thousands of women. The dude's got a reputation for being quite the ladies' man, even back in the day when he was co-founding Def Jam in 84. And speaking of back in the day, remember when he hooked up with Kimora? She was just a 17-year-old aspiring model, while he was a 35-year-old music big shot. Despite all the warnings from her friends, Kimura dove headfirst into that romance. But let's be real, a relationship with that kind of age gap and a flirtatious playboy? Recipe for disaster from the get-go. Russell met Kimura in February of 1993 when she was only 17 and still in high school, and he was 35 and running his wildly successful record label. He co-founded Def Jam nine years earlier, in 1984 with Rick Rubin, and by the time he crossed paths with Kimura, he had already produced a slew of immensely popular tracks through the label, like LL Cool J's I Need a Beat and Beastie Boy's Rock Hard through the label. Plus, he was killing it on the TV front with Def Comedy Jam. Dude had it going on. But you know what else he had? A reputation as a total bad boy and ladies' man. So when he set his sights on Kimora after spotting her at the Mary McFadden show during New York Fashion Week, you can imagine the buzz. All the girls were telling me to leave him alone. Said he's no good, she recalled to Vanity Fair in 2005. I am not the kind of girl that gets in trouble. I'm not that kind of girl. Kimora's bestie Tyra Banks wasn't exactly thrilled about it, to say the least. She recalled Tyra warning Russell. Leave her alone. She's a good girl. She's not like those floozies that you no. Kimora, who grew up in St. Louis, Missouri, was thrust into the modeling world at just 11 years old, all thanks to her mom nudging her into modeling classes. And by the time she hit 13, she was strutting her stuff with a contract from Chanel. Despite her pals raising eyebrows, these two lovebirds kicked things off soon after meeting. While rumors have swirled for years about when exactly the relationship kicked off, Russell has insisted that it began months later, after her 18th birthday that May. He wrote in a now-deleted Instagram comment back in 2020, she turned 18 right after I met her at February Fashion Week. We got to know each other and by May we were dating. She was legal at 17, but she turned 18 that May. Her mother and her manager approved of us and supported us and even pushed us. We really didn't need a push. And the love affair began. Kimura also told Vanity Fair, we didn't do anything until I was 18. Kimura spilled the beans later, admitting that Russell wasn't exactly Mr. Exclusive in the early days, but she claimed he had mad love for her, always. Did he have several girlfriends in his life? Yeah, sure. He was an eligible bachelor and, you know, very wealthy, she said in 2005, while reflecting on the start of their relationship. But he always loved me, and I always loved him, and he was always very, very honest with me, and I was always very, very honest with him. I'm a little embarrassed by the first few of those years because the girlfriends overlap a little. At first, she was cool with his playboy ways, but as time went on, she started feeling the itch to settle down, you know, start a fam and all that jazz. 
Problem was, Russell wasn't exactly on board with the whole husband and dad gig. So you can imagine the tension brewing between wanting to nest and Russell's wild, untamed ways. I was on my way out the door. I was like, this is not going to work, she recalled. I said, I love you, Russell, but you're just not ready to settle down. You got this girl hidden in the corner and one girl over there and one in the bag. She said things came to a head on New Year's Eve in 1997 when they were partying on a big boat in the Caribbean island of St. Bart's and she caught him making out with another woman. I walked onto this boat, me and my girlfriend, we were walking arm in arm, minding our own little business. And she says, oh my God, girl, stop right here. Don't go any further, Kimura said of the moment she walked in on them. And I'm like, what, why? And she's like, just like, let's go back in the other direction. And I said, I'm not going in the other direction. What's going on? Move out of my way. And I walked around her and there was Russell making out with some bimbo on the boat. And that's really what did it. That's really what did it. It was not a famous girl, a beautiful girl, you know, a model. It was one of these random girls. Kimura said she kicked Russell out of where they were staying together and told him she was ending their relationship for good. But what happened next took her by surprise. She continued. I said, I'm leaving you. I don't want to be with you. I don't want to beg you anymore. Whatever it is that you're doing, it's really not my style. And he's like, no, because I love you and you're the woman I want to be with for the rest of my life. And I may be stupid sometimes, but I know that I love you and I want to be with you and we'll get married tomorrow if you don't believe me. And I said, okay, so let's get married. Russell and Kimura decided to make it official with a low-key civil ceremony in New York on December 1998. After that, they jetted off to St. Bart's to party it up with their nearest and dearest. Fast forward to early 1999, and Kimura's stepping into the spotlight as the creative director of Russell's fashion brand, Baby Fat. This power couple wasn't just about romance, they were business partners too. Kimura's own line under Baby Fat took off like wildfire, becoming a mega success in no time. And it didn't stop there. She turned Baby Baby Fat into this massive lifestyle empire, selling everything from clothes to fragrance. In between conquering the fashion world, Russell and Kimura found time to welcome their adorable daughters into the world, Ming in 2000 and Aoki in 2002. But here's where things start to get rocky. Despite their picture-perfect facade, Russell's wandering eye began to take its toll on their relationship. Kimura told Vanity Fair in 2005 that Bees often tried to make moves on her husband, which she admitted was getting under her skin. Women come up to him all the time. Women are unruly and just ridiculous, she said. Like knowing full well that you are married and you have a life and you have a family and they want to flirt and rub their booty in your face. I don't play that disrespectful SHT. I have very little respect for those kinds of women. And if I catch you with my man disrespecting, I will beat your A and his A. Yeah, I'll get them both and knock their heads together. He knows that too. She even claimed that one of her own bridesmaids at their St. Bart's wedding almost ruined the big day due to her jealousy. She said they stole her Manolo's heels moments before she was set to walk down the aisle. It was because they wanted Russell, and they couldn't take it, she said before jokingly adding, have him if you want him. During the interview, Kimura admitted that while Russell had gotten into trouble with other women, she believed he had turned over a new leaf after falling in love with yoga. He's not as perfect as the world thinks he is, she said. He's just rich and famous. The world doesn't see all the rest of that BS. And I see it, because I'm truly Russell's friend, and I've been his friend since I was a teen since I was illegal and I know his mind and his thinking and his pattern and his habits inside and out. The world sees the philanthropist, the entrepreneur, the businessman, the famous man, the GQ man of the year. The world doesn't see you when you have your problems, but I'm a tough girl and could handle it most of the time. But Russell tries every day to be a better person. You know, the whole idea of yoga is that you can be enlightened. She continues saying, he's trying every day to reach enlightenment. He's much different since he started doing yoga. Having yoga allowed him to have a straight mind about things because otherwise he might get into trouble. And when your husband gets into trouble, that's when you got to pull out the A whoppings and start dealing them out. And I will deal them out. And I don't want to have to do that. The constant focus on Russell in the media, rather than on her, was also bothering Kimura, especially regarding their multi-million dollar business. When the Vanity Fair reporter brought up a quote from a different article that said, it must be difficult for Kimura living in the shadow of Russell, she angrily responded, do I look like a shadow hell to you? I don't think so. 
Do I have to talk about Russell? I refuse to talk about Russell anymore. Everyone knows Russell, she added. Russell has a way of making everything about himself. Despite the negative things she had to say about him, Russell was couldn't stop gushing about his wife to the publication. She was a great compliment for me from the beginning. When I met her and she was only 17, she knew which fork to use, all these kinds of things, and spoke several different languages, he said. She was speaking French in all the restaurants, and we went on Diane von Furstenberg's boat. And I didn't know Diane back then, but Kimora knew her. Kimora, even at 17, was a sophisticate in many areas that I was not at all. And so she complimented me in those areas. And in business, in our company platform, Baby Fat, the Jay-Z of the company is her. You know, her investment has been big and has had everything to do with the success. And, you know, she's an excellent mother and an inspiration to a lot of people in terms of what she does and represents. When asked about Kimura's claims that he's been unfaithful, he said, I ain't worried about that. I don't give a F. I'm still looking at the girls A in yoga. I can't get out of it. Just months after the Vanity Fair interview came out, the couple announced that they were separating in March 2006. Kimura and I will remain committed parents and caring friends with great love and admiration for each other, Russell said in a statement at the time. We will also continue to work side by side on a daily basis as partners in all of our businesses. They finally sealed the deal on their divorce three Three long years later, Kimura snagged full custody of their girls while Russell got visitation rights. Initially, things seemed to be all rainbows and butterflies, especially when Kimura found love again with actor Jimon Hunsu in 2007. Russell was even cheering her on from the sidelines. He's a wonderful guy, a very sweet guy. I want her to be happy no matter what, he said to people at the time. They even added a little bundle of joy to the mix, welcoming their son Kenzo in 2009. But alas, love's course never did run smooth, and Kimura and Jimin called it quits in 2012. But Kimura wasn't done with the whole marriage thing just yet. In 2014, she tied the knot with investment banker Tim Leisner, and soon after, they welcomed another little boy named Wolf into the world. And let's not forget about Gary, whom they adopted in 2020. Now, just when you thought the drama had settled down, bam, 2021 hit, and it's legal battle time. Russell throws down the gauntlet, suing Kimura for allegedly pulling a fast one with his shares in an energy drink company called Celsius. Kimura fires back, slamming Russell's lawsuit as nothing but a desperate PR stunt and accuses him of years of mental and emotional torment. This is an ill-advised attempt by Russell to use the legal system to access funds he is in no way entitled to. Russell's continued aggressive behavior not only blatantly distorts the facts, but is simply a desperate PR ploy. Ignoring the years of mental and emotional anguish, gaslighting, and ongoing harassment he has inflicted on Kimura. Russell will be held accountable for his serial A, and we will confront his baseless claims that he is warranted Celsius stock dividends despite his self-admitted zero contribution. In November 2022, a judge ruled in her favor, ordering Russell to pay her $100,000. Since then, Kimura and Russell's relationship has been fiercely fractured, and in June of last year they became embroiled in a nasty online feud that even involved their two daughters. It started after Ming posted a tribute to her mom for Father's Day, sharing a snap that showed her and Kimura posing together at an event which she captioned, Happy Father's Day at Kimura Lee Simmons. Afterwards, Russell posted a furious message to his Instagram stories, seemingly throwing shade at Ming. Stop telling fathers they should have fought harder to see their children and start asking mothers why he had to fight at all he wrote. He also reposted something that said, The father you have is the perfect father for the evolution of your soul and the lessons that you needed to learn in this lifetime. His other daughter Aoki then got involved, writing on her Instagram, I've had enough. I was always a daddy's girl. You can see that in any picture, but he's been awful to me for years, and that's just the truth. Dad, I stopped talking to you because you were giving me panic attacks to the point I was placed on emergency medication every time we spoke. I cannot have a relationship with you until that stops. No one stops me from talking talking to you my health does, I have to put that first." She even shared screenshots of text messages that showed them arguing and videos that saw him yelling at her over FaceTime. He has completely changed. I will come on here and talk about whatever I want because it's my life and I'm the one suffering. This is all he does when we speak, she captioned one of the clips. This is not someone who will accept help. This is just one screen recording. Sorry, I don't always remember to press record when he calls my friends, my boyfriend, anyone, to get a chance to threaten and curse and go crazy. Aoki said she believed her dad was mentally ill and that he acts like he hates her and her sister.
Kimura also weighed in via a post of her own, writing, This man has been threatening my kids' lives. We won't be bullied or threatened or afraid. No one should live like this. No one's child. This is abuse. Not okay. Your threats and lies and intimidation maneuvers and tactics are sad. Your own flesh and blood, enough is enough. Russell then posted a public apology to his daughters, writing, God is testing you a little bit. It's okay. Be strong. They are called growing pains. As you know, we grow through adversity and struggle. You read my books and heard me preach your whole child reach back to old lessons and remember to smile and breathe you are the watchers of this world so let go be at ease God is driving and he is working on you deeply sorry for being frustrated and yelling but know this there are no conditions for sure I love you guys more than I love myself now ushers fans were pretty riled up about the whole Bali rendezvous with Russell and they weren't holding back on their thoughts one fan said usher taking pics with Russell Simmons and making them public was definitely a choice no way he's oblivious to those allegations and why he's in bow. Another fan said, Russell Simmons is a R-word, and Usher has chosen to be in his presence as a friend. So, it's F him too. And yes, this is a recent video, but I want to know what you guys think of all this. Share your thoughts in the comments and we'll catch you in the next video.